which are, are also what we call scalping. Uh, they sell tickets or whatever it is. You sell a product for way more than its normal value. And uh, a very beautiful story. There was a, in Israel, in Israel, a, uh, someone wanted to purchase a certain prayer book, a certain sinner, a, a certain nesach, but he wanted, he insisted on buying a, a sitter that you daven in, not a new one. He wanted to buy one that somebody was used already. Someone already had uh, taken their hands and uh, had said prayers daven in it. He felt somehow that his prayers, his feelings would be more accepted if he daven's in a sitter in a prayer book that somebody else daven in already. He so he, he went from one bookstore to another bookstore. It was Friday early afternoon for Shabbos. He wanted to have the party Shabbos if possible. Was, uh, uh, and he came, uh, came up empty handed from one store to the next until he came into one bookstore. And uh, the gentleman said, Yes, I have exactly that sitter, that prayer book he's looking for. He takes his big, long ladder that hangs on the rail. He climbs all the way up on the top and takes it down and brings it to him. And he says, here it is. He said, all right, how much is it? He said, well, the normal price, he said, is 10 pounds. But I'll tell you, it's already after the high noon. It's after 12 o'clock. And I really wanted to close up already. The day is short. And I wanted to go prepare uh, for Shabbos. some six, seven pounds to be able to make Shabbos, to go purchase what we need to buy for our Shabbos table. So I'll take, give me six pounds, and uh, here you can take the sitter. He says, no. He said, you know what I mean? You said it's, uh, the price is ten. I'll be glad to give you the ten. I'm so happy to get it. He said, no, no, I won't take ten. He said, I only want the six that I wanted. He insisted. He wouldn't take more than a six pound. He took the six pound. That's all. Uh, I know I scalp me here. Uh, we mentioned yesterday that Avram Avinu, Yeshua Kefes HaHoyo, Kachoy Mayim, he was sitting by the uh, opening to his tent, to his dwelling, and uh, he was recovering from the discomfort of surgery of, of a mile, of a bris, of a circumcision. <coughs> And yet, because of his even though he was uncomfortable, he should have been lying in bed recuperating, he wanted to make certain that if someone is passing and they needed lodging, food, whatever it is, an accommodation, that they, they, he should be able to supply it. And along came three, three people came by, he welcomed them in. When he walked them in, so the, the, the Torah tells us that uh, uh, he, he married, he, he, he asked his wife, requested by Shleishim Kemach Soilis, she should quickly run and, and uh, prepare, bake for them Kemach Soilis, uh, some flour to bake for them. Bushi Vasugois, make, make muffins, cake, bread. And Malabakras Abram, he ran to go prepare animals to slaughter them and to. And to Make a festive meal. The um, in as I mentioned yesterday, in Esther the Fathers in Perik it says in a number of things. You in Kemach one thing in Men Kemach in Torah that means there's no sustenance uh, if you don't have what what to uh, sustain yourself. Ain't Torah a person can't devote his life to Torah. Was that what the um, she says a very beautiful thought I mentioned yesterday. A very beautiful thought. He said like this here, that when Mo Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu, when he ascended on high, went up to Har Sinai, Mount Sinai, uh, to receive the tablets, the Torah. <coughs> so when he came out, uh, he was there, up, up on high. He was found himself in the in the company of angels. So they they set up a barricade. They protested. They said, they, "You can't." Uh, he told the angels that they can't. Uh, the angels told him that 
What do you, my, you, you can't take this Torah. You came to take the Torah. You can't take it. And then they told him, they, they told him, uh, they dressed themselves in the money. And Hashem, he said, a, a Torah that's such a rich treasure and was put aside for so many generations to present it to the right one that will keep it and will honor it. How can you give it to human beings that will trust us more than the honor? That's not a Torah for human beings. So the medic tells us that the Almighty performed plastic surgery. He made Moshe Mabino's face resemble that of Abraham, the page of Abraham Mabino. And he pointed to Abraham Mabino and he said, he pointed and he said, Klum, he pointed to, um, to Moshe Mabino, look like Abraham Mabino. He said, Klum, he ran to the same baseline. Didn't you, weren't you welcomed in his hidden home? You were hungry, thirsty, tired, he says, exhausted. You welcomed me in your home. And that's how you repay the good you gratitude. So this uh Sage told me, Yadi Miyah they stood aside and uh, and they let my Shirabain receive the Torah. So Ram Shim said that's the Pshat. Imain Kemach, if not for the Kem Shlesim Kemach, that uh my Roma Bino brought forth to feed and to make to satisfy his his guests ain't Torah, Moshe Rabbeinu would not have been able to receive the Torah. <coughs> Moshe Rabbeinu was, uh, Roma Vino, his, his great virtue was chesed, compassion and kindness for his fellow man. Uh, we know that when someone is, he carries a banner, has a posture, an image of a certain virtue, so he rejoices uh, when someone who is the exact opposite, who, who ridicules or uh, who, uh, who belittles that particular virtue, if that person has a downfall, he rejoices. Ah, look how right. Look, look. It, it, now, uh, this proves that I know what I'm talking <coughs> about, how great I am, how, how wise I am. Everything that I do is so correct. Yet, when in this week's whole reading, when the Almighty told Abraham that they're going to reach, uh, destroy wicked, uh, the very wicked, uh, cruel uh, 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 city of Zdain, which were the exact opposite of Roma Vino. Their wickedness was, was unbelievable, Their, how they would torture human beings. How they not only would they extend themselves with mercy and kindness, but anybody that that himself uh, came forth with any act of kindness, they, they they would torture him, they would punish him. An unbelievable story. I mean, so what they did with a with a girl, how they tortured her to death because because of her kindness. I said, Yet, and so they stood for the exact opposite of Moshe, of Avraham Avinu. Yet, when the, uh, the Almighty punished them told Avraham Avinu he's going to destroy his dream. What did he do? He didn't clap his hands and rejoice. He began pleading to the Almighty. He said, Almighty Father in Heaven, maybe not the entire city, most of them might be wicked, but maybe we'll find Hamish, maybe we'll find 50 that, that it's worthwhile to, for the, that in their merit we should save the city. He couldn't find 50, he says, maybe 40. He didn't, he was relentless in his petitioning the Hashem, the Almighty, that he shouldn't destroy his dome. Here's someone who stood for the exact opposite, yet he pleaded for this is the greatness of our Lord Vino. Conclusion, there was a, uh, uh, one time some, I passed a, a church, a monastery, and uh, it was a mag I saw a magnificently manicured lawn. It looked like every blade of grass was cut blade by blade. And it was posted a, uh, a very conspicuous sign, four foot by eight foot. And the sign read the following. They want to make sure that nobody destroys, it always maintains its beauty, this, 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 uh, this garden, this lawn. So the sign read the following. No trespassing allowed. All violators will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. It was signed Sisters of Mercy. <laughs> <laughs>